and cheat on me during your bachelor party? Good luck explaining to your family why our $50,000 wedding was cancelled last minute. I've always heard stories of lying, cheating husbands, but you truly never think it could happen to you until it does. All of this insanity happened in the past week, and I still feel like I'm living a nightmare that I'm waiting to wake up from. I was with my ex-fiancé for three years. When I met him, it felt like a dream come true, and he really seemed like my Prince Charming. We had so many similar interests, and he seemed like such a kind, sensitive man. He was always soft-spoken and seemed so different from any man I had ever met in my life. He was always complimenting me and getting me tiny gifts, and I felt so loved by him. He proposed to me a year ago at my favorite high-end restaurant. I cried so hard since it felt like one of the happiest moments of my life, and I never thought I would have been loved like that. Looking back, I should have known the relationship was too good to be true. He had never loved me, never. For context, I come from a very poor background while my boyfriend's situation is the opposite. His parents are very well off, and when they heard about his proposal, they were thrilled and offered to pay for the entire wedding. I'll be honest, most women would probably have been overjoyed to have their wedding fully funded, but I never saw myself having a huge, garish wedding. I honestly don't even like big weddings, and I feel like they're more about appearances and materialism than the love of the couple. I truly only ever wanted a small, intimate backyard wedding since I don't like organizing big events or being the center of attention. My future mother-in-law and sister-in-law took me dress shopping, but they shot down all the simple dresses I liked and insisted that it was my day and I should look like a princess. I just stopped giving my opinion after they laughed at my favorite pick, and I just let them choose dresses for me even though I hated them all. I felt pressured since their family was paying for my wedding so I didn't put my foot down when they picked out a big fancy wedding dress for me that was totally not my style. I remember trying not to cry while looking at myself in the mirror and just feeling trapped. But I love my fiancé and I knew his family was just trying to help, so I sucked it up and just went along with whatever they said. I was already beginning to dread my wedding, but I tried to stay focused on the love I had for my fiancé. Little did I know, I would be losing that soon enough. My ex-fiancé's family arranged out-of-state bachelor and bachelorette parties for my husband and me. I didn't know about the specifics of the bachelor party, but the bachelorette party was just us getting a booth at a loud club. I didn't think about having a talk with my fiancé about boundaries at these parties. As I said, he was a loving man who I trusted with all my heart. I'm not an insecure person, and I could have never guessed what my fiancé would end up doing at his bachelor party and I just wish I hadn't found out the way I did. I did not have a good time at my own party. My fiancé's family had only invited one of my actual friends. The rest of the girls there were women from my fiancé's family that I didn't know well. I spent most of the night missing my fiancé and feeling anxious that I might feel the same way on the date of my actual wedding. I felt awful and isolated that night. Little did I know, it was only the beginning of the pain that awaited me. When I saw my fiancé again after our parties, something seemed so off about him. At that point, we had been together for years and I could read his mannerisms better than anyone. For the weekend between our parties and the actual wedding, my fiancé seemed nervous and sort of distracted. I'd never really seen him like that before and I kept asking him what was bothering him. All he said was that he was nervous about the wedding, but I had never seen him like this, so his behaviour was really making me worried. In the days before our wedding, I was a mess. I was racked with anxiety over the huge, luxurious wedding that I had never wanted, and I didn't feel stable in my own relationship. I remember thinking that I should have felt happy and excited before the wedding, but I felt the complete opposite. The night before our wedding, my fiancé had been acting weird all night and spending a lot of time on his phone. I was up in the middle of the night, unable to sleep because of my anxiety, and something just snapped in me, and I decided to check his phone to find some clues about why he had been acting strangely. I saw that the group chat that he had with his friends, which he used almost every day, was completely deleted off his phone. It was weird since I was sure they had been using it the weekend of the bachelor party, so I thought its absence was really suspicious. That's when I decided to look into his messages with his mom, who he is really close with. My world shattered as I read their conversation. It revealed to me that he had cheated on me at his bachelor party with a stripper. 
He had admitted what he had done the morning after the party to his mother over text. She scolded him at first, but then immediately started comforting him. Ever since then, whenever he felt guilty, he would text his mom and say he had to tell me. And she would comfort him and convince him that it would be fine and to keep it to himself. She told him it would only hurt me and that the wedding was all arranged and everything was paid for, and this wasn't a good enough reason to let everybody down. His mom had always been nice to my face, so I was appalled to see her so complicit in his cheating and his secrecy. I felt so destroyed in that moment, but part of me felt weirdly relieved. As soon as I found out about the cheating, I knew I wouldn't be marrying this man, and that this wedding was happening over my dead effing body. I sat there in bed next to my sleeping, cheating fiancé and tried to decide what to do next. I remember looking at him and wondering how dare he sleep so soundly as my heart broke beside him. After about an hour of thinking and planning, I knew exactly how I wanted to handle this. The single thing I had paid for out of the whole wedding was my fiancé and I's honeymoon trip since I had wanted to stay in a nice resort in my home country and my in-laws didn't agree with my choice of location. So that night, I bought an earlier flight for my honeymoon trip and extended my reservation for a day earlier. I packed a small bag in the middle of the night and thank God that my fiancé didn't wake up while I was packing. I left for the airport in the middle of the night knowing my wedding was planned for the very next morning. And none of my family was attending the wedding since they all live overseas. So I texted my one friend who was my maid of honor and explained the situation to her. She understood and said she wouldn't tell anyone how to contact me or where I was. I got on the plane all by myself and when we took off, I started crying for the first time since I found out about my fiancé's cheating. There was just something moving and liberating about knowing I was flying away from my fiancé, away from my in-laws. I was leaving behind all the pressures of the wedding and it felt right. The planning had made me feel suffocated for months and I felt like a baby taking its first breath as I cried alone during takeoff. When I got to the resort, I was still very emotionally vulnerable. I ended up trauma dumping by accident on the resort receptionist and quickly apologized for oversharing, saying I was just in a bad place and it was still very fresh. She ended up feeling bad for me and upgraded my room to the best room in the resort. I was lonely in the room all by myself, but my view was stunning and I shut off my phone as soon as I put my stuff down in my room. I took the vacation to relax and recover. I journaled and cried a lot, and I decided when I flew back home that I would move to a new area and have a completely fresh start. Everything that happened was so painful and suffocating, but at the end of the day, I chose myself instead of caring about other people's expectations of me. I resent my ex-fiancé for cheating on me, but I'm grateful he showed me who he was before I committed to him and made the worst mistake of my entire life. His actions revealed his true character, and I was able to escape a lifetime of potential heartache and betrayal. And during my stay at the resort, I took time to reflect on my life and my future. I made a promise to myself to prioritize my happiness and well-being moving forward. I decided to cut off all ties with my ex-fiancé and his family. I blocked their numbers and social media accounts, and I informed my close friends and family about my decision. When I returned home, I focused on rebuilding my life. I found a new job in a different city, allowing me to start fresh. I also sought therapy to help process the emotional trauma and to ensure I was making healthy decisions for myself. It wasn't easy, but with time I began to heal and regain my confidence. As for my ex-fiancé, I heard through mutual acquaintances that he struggled to explain the sudden cancellation of our wedding. His family was embarrassed and upset, and he had to face the consequences of his actions. I never reached out to him again, and I have no intention of reopening that chapter of my life. Through this painful experience, I learned the importance of self-respect and the strength to walk away from toxic situations. I realized that I deserve to be with someone who truly values and respects me and I am hopeful that one day I will find that person. For now, I am content with focusing on my personal growth and happiness.